On the 15th of November 1998, yet another crisis in the Gulf was averted as Iraq allowed inspectors back into Baghdad. The job now lies with two organizations, UNSCOM, which is evaluating Iraq's chemical, biological and missile weapons program, and the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, which monitors its nuclear capability. While Richard Butler has been in the center of news and controversy, the Director General of the powerful IAEA, Dr. El Baradi, has not spoken to the press until now. In a rare interview to It's a Small World, he spoke not only about Iraq's nuclear file, but about IAEA's global efforts towards a nuclear weapons-free world. So UNSCOM and the Iraq action team went into um, Iraq in 1992. It is now seven years and there is no final verdict. Why this delay, you think? I can only talk about the nuclear file. I mean, we are responsible for verifying the nuclear, clandestine nuclear program in Iraq. The UNSCOM is doing chemical, biological, and missiles. I cannot really speak for them. And, uh, but as insofar as the nuclear file, I think we have made a good progress. Last week, in fact, when I was supposed to be in Bombay, I had to go to New York to, uh, to brief the Security Council. And my briefing to the Security Council that we have now a coherent picture of Iraq clandestine program. We have no indication that Iraq has neither nuclear weapon or nuclear weapon uh, material or the capability to make these items. It took us also a, a, a long number of years because verification of a country, you know, a country-wide verification, which takes a, which try to prove the absence of, of readily concealable item is a very difficult uh, process and it requires a good deal of transparency on the part of the state. Unfortunately, also in Iraq, we did not see full transparency during many periods of time, and, and we had to overcompensate that by doing lots of additional verification activities. But in other words, has the Iraq action team certified that the file can be closed? We do not certify. We are like an accountant, and an and, and, and audit system. A, a, a public accountant will not certify the account. They learn that, but they express an opinion, and that's what we do. But we express an opinion based on a lot of available evidence and information, and we stand, I think, by our opinion, yes. Mr. El Bradi, it's a pity that you were not able to attend the seminar in Bombay recently, which the IAEA and the Department of Atomic Energy um, organized in, in Bombay on uh, nuclear power in developing countries. Forty-three countries, in fact, just pulled out of the resolution of which they were initially a part. What was the scribbling over? At the general conference, there was a large majority who, who wanted to pronounce itself on, on the Indian and Pakistani test. There are also you know, a, a large number of countries who also felt that at the same time, you have to call on the weapon states to move toward nuclear disarmament. I think these are the two, two major thrust behind, behind the resolution of the general conference. There was, of course, lots of different views. Of course, India and Pakistan were not very comfortable to be, you know, to, to have the test deplored because there's their view that this is, has to be looked at in, in a larger prospect of nuclear disarmament. On the other hand, the weapon state thought that this is not the opportunity to, to call on them uh, to, to, to move toward nuclear disarmament because they did not w want to mix the, the, the test in the Indian subcontinent Con, uh, continent with the, with, the, with the overall question of nuclear disarmament. So there was a lot of quibbling, as I think, and, and you, as you saw in, at, the, at the end, a resolution which is with a, with a lot of abstention. So in other words, the consensus broke down. The consensus broke down. But, uh, but the message, I think, was clear. As I said, please, you know, th th this is not the way to go, and also move toward nuclear disarmament as early as possible and intensify your effort, which I think I'm, I'm very comfortable with these two messages. Yeah. So on the one hand, your job is to promote nuclear technology and peaceful uses of nuclear technology. On the other, you're very intrusive and almost prohibitive um, safeguard and, uh, and safety systems. They, they tend to be a deterrent. I mean, I've known countries where they say, well, who the hell wants to go in for all of this? We'll be content with our good old Heidel and coal power? It's a question of perception, I think. You know, it's, it's a question that, as you mentioned, we are intrusive. I don't think we are intrusive. I think we, we, we are providing a service. I'd like to present our verification system as a service, as a service to, to the inspected country. So the, so the country, in fact, can provide assurance that its program is exclusively for peaceful purpose. 
We have over 180 states who have accepted comprehensive verification on their nuclear activities. And I don't think, to, to my knowledge, that uh, once, once you experience uh, the, the agency verification, I don't, think, I don't think it becomes a problem. I think part of the problem is, is that there is a feeling that, that some countries are subject to this regime and others are not. I think that's, that's probably part of the problem, that it is not uh, applicable across the board. So I didn't use uh, this language. You yourself have said, in other words, that there is a, a system of apartheid uh, in, in the overall framework. Now, on the one hand, you have got safeguards and safety measures for X number of countries. On the other, you've got countries where since 1968, when the NPT came into being, who have not, under Article 6, um, uh, moved one inch towards disarmament. I think it's, again, it's a question, it's a very subjective judgment. There are those who say that, uh, that Article 6 has not been implemented. There are others, you know, who are saying, including, of course, the weapons, who are saying they have made good progress, that they are moved from a situation when you had 70,000 nuclear warheads, both you know, the Soviet Union and Russia, to a situation now where, according to Seoul II, they will have 7,000. You refer to the question, this is an apartheid regime. I'm not sure whether that, it's a regime which was established in 1968, when there were already five nuclear weapon states. And I think the international community decided that five nuclear weapon states are five too many. You probably have to move fast and reduce the, the amount of nuclear weapon as much as we can, but you would reach a threshold when you really have to also think of, of what is the alternative collective security system. And there, that's the, the role of the Security Council, the role of the UN. We have a lot of work, but I'm optimistic that at least the environment is created right now where everybody believes that nuclear disarmament is our ultimate goal. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much. Very kind of you.